The seven wonders of the world. Majestic monuments that draw the attention of millions of people every year. Which means hordes of tourists, families with kids running around, spoiling the unique experience of these incredibly mainstream places. If you're into the Taj Mahal, the Pyramids of Giza or other touristy attractions, this travel series is not for you. But if you lean more towards obscure locations, if bizarre events are right up your alley, or if you enjoy dabbling into the weird side of gastronomy, please put on your seatbelts. We're about to go for a very, very crazy ride. Welcome to Colombia. No, it's not a joke. We really are in Colombia, particularly in the Parque Jaime Duque, which is an amusement park that contains replicas of several major locations from around the world. When you say Colombia, people usually think of the TV series Narcos and the most notorious drug lord Pablo Escobar. But what if I told you that Colombia is also about a sport that includes mud, a lot of beer, and explosions. The amusement park may charm you at first sight, but after a short walk accompanied by swarms of school children, you will find that this is not the right spot for someone who seeks off-the-beaten-path experiences. Fortunately, the birthplace of the explosive national sport of Colombia was just a short drive away from us. Y nos vamos a jugar tejo. To learn more about Colombia's favorite pastime, which can leave you with mud stains all over your clothes, we met Arsenio, who has been playing the sport for over 50 years. Acá vivían tribus indígenas y se inventaron el, el deporte que no se llamaba tejo en ese entonces, sino juego al turmeque. Ellos dicen que empezaron eh, fabricando unos discos de oro y lo la, un lanzamiento aéreo a ir a pegarle a un objeto que habían eh, estipulado, que pegarle a otra piedra o algo así similar. In its current version, the game of tejo consists of throwing a metal disc across an alley to a wooden board. The board is covered with mud and triangle-shaped envelopes are placed inside. These contain gunpowder and when the metal disc hits them, they explode. ¿Cómo se gana una man? El tejo puede caer acá. Sí. Siempre y cuando no toque ningún extremo de. Sí. Puede caer aquí. El compañero o usted llega y cae aquí por delante, usted ya cogió la mano. Bueno. De igual manera, si cae mi, mi tejo acá está haciendo mano, pero si el otro llega y cae aquí por el antico, claro. quitó la Entonces mano. hay que hay que estar el más cerca del círculo. El más cerca del sí, círculo. Correcto. Claro. Una mecha vale tres puntos. Si cayó acá en el centro, bien metido obviamente, uh -huh. le vale seis puntos. Seis puntos. Sí, correcto. Bueno. La moñona, que se llama es caer acá y reventar la mecha y quedar enterrado bien enterrado, bueno. vale nueve puntos. Nueve puntos. Bueno, entonces Vamos a jugar. ¿Quieres jugar conmigo un ratito? Claro. Listo, pues vamos a eso. Vamos, pues. vamos a jugar. <laughs> After learning the basic rules of this dirty Colombian version of petang, it was time to choose the perfect weight of my tejo and showcase my talent to Arsenio. Bueno. Okay. Vale. Oh, damn. Dale, dale, dale. Dale. Dale, dale. I'm really bad at this. <laughs> He's really good. It's so far away. Había un cacique que entonces este señor tenía varias esposas y entonces el el párroco del pueblo lo llamó y le dijo hombre usted está cometiendo una falta gravísima teniendo varias mujeres. Tiene que decidirse cómo hacer. Y el hombre esa noche ni pudo dormir de pensar qué iba a hacer y cómo lo iba a hacer, si a todas las quería. Y entonces se le iluminó el bombillo y, 
Y al otro día las puso a jugar a las mujeres. La, la que hiciera la, la figura es con él ya se queda ah, y así fue. Y... It is safe to say that if I attended that ancient tournament, I wouldn't be chosen as the chieftain's next wife. Oh no. Oh no. No. Oh no. This is not my lucky side. Mm -hmm. Wow. Generalmente el lanzamiento se hace casi a pie firme sin 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 ir caminando. Oh! It exploded. With Arsenio's valuable advice, I was finally able to hit at least the mud. Ooh, that was a good shot. But I still got humiliated and lost. <laughs> what a way to end the game with an explosion. Aquí se han hecho campeonatos de departamentales y vienen y juegan algunos departamentos muy perfectamente como es el juego verdaderamente. No señor, no me gusta jugar campeonatos ni tampoco hacer acá en mi en mi negocio campeonatos. No no entiendo, pero no no me nace eso. Arsenio may not be the type to show off his skills in a competition, but Colombia was about to meet his new apprentice. I just registered myself for a Tejo tournament that takes place in this small village in, Cent in central Colombia. Uh, there are about 30 participants and every single one of them is drinking beer. The tournament has not started yet. The registration fee was about $4, which means I can win over $100 tonight. I feel strong. I think I can pull this off. So I'm playing against someone whose name or nickname is Puma. Sounds dangerous, sounds really, really dangerous. And by the way, this is mini Tejo, not Tejo. There are two ways to play Tejo. The, the real Tejo with the huge distance that we played on the countryside with Arsenio and mini Tejo that we're playing today and that I'm going to win. Pues, él empieza, ¿sí? Empieza. Bueno, ¿eres Puma? Yo soy Pedro, encantado. Mucha suerte. Wishing good luck to my opponent wasn't really necessary because I was apparently playing against the Colombia's future champion. He threw it right into the middle. That's six points? Puma was absolutely killing it. It was almost as if there was a magnet pulling his tejo to the center of the mud, while my performance was lackluster at best. Oh. I think it's gonna be impossible to win this. Hopefully my second opponent is blind. It was a disgraceful defeat against Puma. My only chance to stay in the tournament was beating my second opponent Rivera. I really hope that Rivera is drunk. I really hope that he's drunk. No, sí, claro, el alcohol es el principal punto en una jugada de tejo. Mire que a veces cuando pues no puedo tomar licor por algunas circunstancias, el juego no se me logra. Y descubrí de que de que el cerebro debe estar algo eh, tupido puede ser para no sé, de pronto hacer el lanzamiento eh, sin nervios, eh, lo lanza uno más relajadamente. Pero en, en realidad que el licor es indispensable en el juego al tejo. I'm just astonished by the accuracy of these guys. They're like, I'm on my third beer, so I'm getting tipsy, and they're on probably their fourth or fifth one. And look, look they're just hitting the circle all the time. Tejo has been widely exploited by beer companies in Colombia. Many people see it as a game of drunks, while others claim it's a serious sport with rich history. One way or another, after knocking back my third beer, I magically started getting points. No, what happened? Oh, it fell! Hice una! Oh! <laughs> I scored a point. I have to distract him somehow. Otro punto. Who got the point? I got the point. I'm winning. I'm winning. Es un punto para mí. 
Ah, bueno. It was a thrilling match with the best Tejo played on both sides, but eventually Rivera sent me home with his last perfect throw. El ganó, ¿no? Ganaste. Felicidades, felicidades. Bien. So that's the end of me and Tejo, probably forever. The failed attempt to become Colombia's first foreign Tejo champion left me with a bad taste in my mouth. To cheer myself up, I headed north, to the department of Santander's countryside, to find arguably the strangest food Colombia has to offer. We are in a forest near the town of Socorro with the local hunter Felipe and we're hunting a specialty of this region. It's a land of poisonous snakes, scorpions, bees and a very special animal. In the forests of the Santander region, a particular type of insect is collected every spring during heavy rainfall season. It's 6 a.m. in the morning. We had to wake up really early because there are a lot of people hunting and collecting these animals. You gotta be first in the forest. It's like mushroom picking. You gotta beat the competition. These creatures are not so easily procured. To find a couple of them, you need to look behind dry tree trunks or places with short grass. And even then, you may not be successful, as their numbers in nature are slowly dwindling. Every year, from March to May, hunters like Felipe are gathering ants. A very unusual type of ants with an even more unusual purpose. He cazado las hormigas culonas desde que era un niño con mi padre, de que de la edad de nueve años aproximadamente. Las llevo a mi casa, las arreglo porque hay que quitarle las las alas y las frito. ¿Has encontrado una? Sí, señor. Esta ah. pica durísimo. Ah. ¿Quiere ver? Durísimo. Duro. Re duro. Acá. Pero es, es la hormiga culona? No. No, no es culona. Pero... Novio. La pica. La mordedura. Lo inflama, le da dolor de cabeza. Pero las, las que lo cuidan. Si me muerde una hormiga, me inflamaría y me sacaría sangre. Fuerte. So we found a male of the big ass ant, the hormiga culona. And uh, this one bites really bad. I'm gonna get bitten just for the sake of the video. Ah! Ooh, that hurt. <laughs> that hurt. Ah! Oh, damn. Okay. Ooh, okay. Pica, pica duro. <laughs> Donde esta tu esposa? Where's your wife? Where's your wife? I usually don't have problems attracting women, so not being able to find the gigantic female of the big butted ant was a hard pill to swallow. There are plenty of ant nests here with a lot of small ants feeding the big ones that are inside. It's really hard to predict when the big ones would come outside, so we just need to wait. My cameraman is getting bitten by, by the smaller ones. So I think we should go. After a never ending three hours in the humid forests of Socorro and discovering every species of insect except the big bodied ants, we decided to call it a day. We've been roaming around the forest for a while with no success. I guess the big ants don't like to be on a camera. Lucky enough, these fields are not the only place where we can find them. In a nearby town, San Gil, the capital of this province, and people here love eating ants. The street sellers buy them from hunters like Felipe and sell them here in the downtown. Let's get ourselves some crunchy treats. Where 
Buenos días. Son las hormigas culonas. ¿Y cuánto cuesta un vasito? Bien. Voy a comprar uno. Bueno. I just bought the big ass ants. To be quite frank, they smell absolutely terrible. Let's try this. Look at the size. They're fried, by the way. Mmm. Wow. I expected like a very insecty flavor, but they're actually really good. They taste like popcorn. They're very salty, crunchy. You would never say you are eating ants. I'm addicted to this. Wow. La hormiga culona se come con yuca, arroz, plátano. Es un plato de entrada con el cual uno puede mezclarlo con cualquiera. Es típico de Santander. It's common to eat the ants like chips here, but there are places where they take this weird snack into a whole new level. With a significant part of the Santanderian gastronomy revolving around big-budded ants, it's no surprise that some restaurants offer variations of this insect delicacy in their menu. What we got here is called chorota, which is basically an empanada typical for the Santander region. The dough is made out of corn and grounded ants. It's filled with rice, goat's blood and goat's meat and accompanied with a passion fruit sauce. Mm. That is absolutely lovely. I would never say that a passion fruit sauce could accompany an empanada so well. The sauce is very sour and of course you cannot taste the ends. Mm. Wow. I'm in love with this region. The second meal we're having here is called desgranado. It's very popular all around Colombia, from north to south. It's usually eaten at night as fast food, and it's made out of corn, several types of meat, and cheese. But what is special about this particular dish here in Santander is that they put butter, which is seasoned with ants here. So, buen provecho. Oh wow, that's really great. This is a lovely entree. Mm. Very rich in flavor, love the cheese. Again, I cannot taste any ants here. Now I understand why this dish is so popular in Colombia. I'm gonna finish it real quick because it's so delicious. And then let's wash it down with the last weird and delicacy of this region. Muchas gracias. Ladies and gentlemen, the ant margarita, which is a regular margarita, but with ant powder on the edges of the glass. Salud. Mm. That's lovely, especially in this humid, hot weather of the Santander region. I'm gonna finish this real fast. Mm. This end margarita is making me a bit tipsy, which means I suddenly want to be entertained, and I know just the event that can provide me with a distraction. Let's hit the mountains of the Boyaca region. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. I love Skillshare. In the past, I took classes that taught me how to animate, write better short stories, or how to be more productive. As you can see, there are many categories to choose from and this time I jumped into music. I consider myself an intermediate guitar player, so I decided to improve my acoustic guitar skills with something new, and I took a class called Spanish Guitar Strumming Techniques by Edina Balzo. She's a great teacher, and after several hours of practicing, I think I can play rumba. 
So whether you want to get better at playing the guitar, taking better pictures or maybe painting, which are all really sexy skills, Skillshare is there for you. And for the first 1000 people that use the link in the description, it's free. Yes, you'll get a free one month trial. So hurry up creative people. This place is not giving me good vibes. People holding roosters, everybody staring at us. Police being here, what the hell? It's hard to keep looking at the fights, there's blood everywhere. 